is one of the best daily drivable supercars out there, and for about the past half year, I've been living with one. Driving to work every day, grocery trips, a couple short road trips too, it's been absolutely fantastic. So I wanted to share a bit of what it's like to live with an Audi R8. That one specifically there is a 2018 RWS. RWS stands for Rear Wheel Series, so it's effectively the first purely rear wheel drive Audi ever. They did limit the car to 999 with 320 coming to America. It has the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10, it's mid-engine. For the Gen 2 R8s, only V10 and V10 Plus were available, so there's no longer a V8 option at all. Seven speed dual clutch, and again, purely rear wheel drive. The car is mostly stock. That vinyl stripe was available for the RWS models. We do have an aftermarket Capristo carbon fiber front lip, and you'll note the Audi Sport badge. It is not Quattro branded. We do have keyless entry, so the handle here is underneath. Unlock, we've got the red interior too with the white exterior. Definitely is nice. Not much carbon at all. Actually, no OEM carbon on this RWS. No interior carbon. And the side blades for the RWS, you get painted gloss black above and then body color for the lower. So it's all Ibis white. But uh, it's still got the V10. So, virtual cockpit right in front. This is a warm start because I just did drive the car home. Ah, just a naturally aspirated V10 sound. The Gen 2 R8s don't have an infotainment screen in the middle, it's just all virtual cockpit here. So CarPlay takes over your entire center screen. Pre-2018 models, the 2017 didn't have CarPlay. It had virtual cockpit, and I think it's upgradable with like a software update from the dealership, but uh, only 2018 plus R8s had CarPlay, which honestly, it's a little bit late <laughs> in the market to get to it, but uh, this one does indeed have it. And this engine is probably like 85% of the reason why I bought this car. Gen 1 and Gen 2, that's an R8 GT. Look at those front canards. Congrats on the new car, dude. Thank you so much. Two, is that, is it white? It's that, Suzuki Gray. Suzuki, oh man. Is it matte finish too? Matte finish. All right, let's Audi, park and check these Audi things out. Exclusive. Audi exclusive. That's uh, that's the mine. Mine is just Audi common, Ibis white. <laughs> so John reached out on Instagram a while ago. So you're upgrading from an R8 V8 yes, to sir. a V10 R8 GT with a Stasis supercharger on it. Yes, sir. One of 333. Uh huh. So it is more rare than my RWS. Congratulations, Thank dude. Thank you so much. We're gonna get some uh, some steak because I'm, I'm starving. But uh, <laughs> are you freezing? You're from Texas. This is probably uh, way this, too cold. This is, this is the coldest I've ever been, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a new R8, so let's turn the camera on and check that thing out. Let's go check it out. Gen 2 V10. Gen 1 V10. The R8 GT was a limited, kind of a little more hardcore. So that, you said it was 560? Stock? 560, 560 stock, so it's the same uh, horsepower as the LP. Uh, 560. LP. Where so that's 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 more power than yeah. mine. <laughs> mine only makes I think 540, 532 or whatever. Uh, and then you've got the supercharger on it. It's cool that they're both shades of white with the red accents. The R8 GT got a different rear bumper. R8 GT taillights, the big wing, and a supercharger. So this is at least 700 probably. 700. 750 yeah, horsepower, that's healthy. Uh, they were only Artronic though, I think. Artronic, yes. Artronic. The yeah. side blade, the carbon blade on the first gen, had this piece that came out for the V10, so it's like widened. This is all satin finish too, GT badge there. And we have the front canards. Man, this is one of the best looking of the Gen 1 R8s. It's cool having the two of them together. My lights are off. There we go. Oh, that is awesome. Great dinner. I am very full now, uh, but I need to get home tired. I have probably three to four hours of editing ahead of me and was up till 3 a.m. yesterday editing. The car is also filthy, so I need to wash it at some point. And we're low on fuel, so we'll fill up the gas station tomorrow. I don't remember the fuel tank capacity, but I think it's over 20 gallons. This thing has a pretty big range once you have it full and you're just cruising on the freeway in seventh gear. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we're gonna head home and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. The sound of an R8 cold start in the morning.
turbo, that's when you get some of the exhaust pops and it definitely gets a bit louder and a bit more exciting. And just listen to how quickly the seven speed dual clutch shifts. With the paddle shifters, here's a downshift. <laughs> it's not perfect. A PDK and a Porsche will be just a little bit better, but the Huracan R8 dual clutch is pretty fantastic. And compared to R-Tronic, or what uh, myself and my boss like to call R-Tragic, um, it's just night and day difference. It's so much smoother and easier to drive. It's, it's a transmission you can just live with. The front trunk on the R8, it's only just decent. Pull the latch there. Uh, it's not the most spacious. The all-wheel drive ones kind of limit how spacious it can be, like a Ferrari 458 or something. It's like or McLaren or Porsche. It's like two to three times the size of this trunk. But it works. The base R8 only has a start-stop button and a drive select button here. No active exhaust and I think there's a checkered like race mode flag on the V10 Plus. up this living with the R8 video a couple days later actually post exhaust install so now the R8 has a B-Rogue built titanium exhaust and it sounds insane it's early in the morning we're actually heading down again to B-Rogue and dynamic detailing to get winter tires put on the R8 because the car is being driven in the snow but first as usual with most of the R8 ownership experience I am low on gas again so I need to go get some fuel and then we're driving down swapping to Pirelli Soto Zeros uh, which is going to be really interesting this week winter before any of that cold start so I'm gonna to apologize to my neighbors because this is gonna be pretty loud empty so this will be a full tank with the angry little final red bar on the gas gauge the little yellow gas logo symbol thing and 20 miles empty but luckily we are at Costco the RA just took 19.3 gallons so it was pretty empty this car has a decent sized tank which is good uh, for fuel range overall so showing 415 miles not so great for the wallet uh, even at Costco gas is $3.99 a gallon so that was a $77 fill up uh, could be worse but also could be better Let's go. actually kind of almost full they're almost at the wear bars like 9,000 miles in so we're putting soda zeros rear wheel drive problems the rear tires are almost bald at 9,000 miles and the front tires have plenty of tread left so next summer I'll probably just replace the rears with Michelin PS4S tires but right now soda zero threes going on the car uh, the car is gone it's gone around to the back now otherwise next time you see the car it's gonna have winter tires on it mm -hmm. 